What's up everybody? My name is Jeremy. This is my YouTube channel Tie-Dye Tanks and once again I am here with a, another video in the Tie-Dye 101 series where we are showing you all the basics of tie-dye. And we've gone through equipment and how to mix your dyes, how to prep your uh, shirts for dyeing. And I've also showed you a basic design called the spiral. Today we're going to show you another basic design called the scrunch. And the scrunch is a pattern that I use a lot. I use it because about 75% of the backgrounds on my um, hand painted or stitched shirts, which I will show you how to make in future videos, are a scrunch background. Now I do some other backgrounds too, of course, but you're going to see about, like I said, 75% of them will be scrunches. Because for me it's easier, um, after I've tied this shirt for 7 to 8 hours, especially on stitching, I would rather not spend a ton of time on the background. Um, I have before. I've done some pretty extensive backgrounds on some shirts before. Uh, but usually it's a scrunch, and the scrunch also is good because if you do a symmetrical scrunch, which I'll explain soon, uh, it creates all these spaces in the shirt. I'm wearing a scrunch shirt right now. This is actually an older shirt. I've had this for about three years. So this also will show you the durability of the dyes and the shirts that I use um, because th these dyes haven't faded that much over <laughs> three years and I wear this all the time, wash it all the time. So uh, so I'm not going to waste any more time here. We're going to get into showing you how to tie and dye the scrunch. So let me switch the camera over and we'll start tying this bad boy. Thank you. All right, as I said before, we're doing the scrunch pattern today. And so for every pattern, of course, I start out with the shirt laid flat on the table. And this is a Gildan tagless shirt again. And I smooth out all the wrinkles. Make sure it looks nice. And now uh, for a regular scrunch pattern, just a regular scrunch pattern, you would just have the shirt like it is right here. And you just start scrunching and start at any part of the shirt and how I'm scrunching is I'm just taking the shirt and just using my fingers to scrunch it into different random patterns and work my way along the shirt and switch it up here and there so it looks different it's pretty much random on these folds and as you see when you die it's going to be random too so don't try to get too technical with it. You can try to, you know, make certain shapes out of it, but even just making it random folds will make it look. Okay, that's just a regular scrunch there. Now, after I band it, it's going to scrunch up a little bit more because the bands definitely aren't as big as that. Now, I'm going to show you how to do a symmetrical scrunch now. And with a symmetrical scrunch, that's what I like to make the most because the symmetrical patterns create faces and things on the shirt that you'll have people standing at your booth trying to, to figure out what it is for hours. <laughs> so anyway, to make one of those I'm going to fold the shirt in half. And when I fold the shirt in half, I'm going to fold the inside of the shirt in half because I want the outside of the shirt, if any, if there's any saturations, I want those problems to be on the back of the shirt. And that way, you know, it doesn't show up on, it will show up on the back and not the front. So, what I'll do is fold my shirt in half. And I line up the, the seams and the side of the shirt and make sure it's folded out. And it's got kind of a like a funky like a funky fold in here, a wrinkle. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but if you were to actually want 
to fold this to look nice and symmetrical, you go in there and you fix that little wrinkle that's inside there. But right now, I'm just trying to show you how to do this. So, after I get that folded in half, I'm going to scrunch like I did with the regular scrunch, just randomly. And the people also call this uh, this uh, this design the brain because it kind of looks like a brain. <laughs> Okay, and see it's scrunched up again just like the other one. Now I'm going to band this up. Now how I like to band it is I like to get some larger bands in my nice stretch. These are brand new bands. And I like to go from the top to the bottom first. On both sides, making sure that when it does scrunch up a little bit, that it doesn't scrunch up so much that it folds the shirt inside. That can be the trickiest part because it does like to do that. So you kind of have to make sure that it doesn't do that. <laughs> After I get those bands on there, I will put bands across the arm and chest area here. And those will be larger bands too. We've got an assortment here of a bunch of different sizes. And I'm just making sure that it's it's tight but not tight enough the where it will fold in on me. And I'm going to go with a couple diagonally as well. I have a feeling that one of these bands is going to break on me. Oh, voila, I didn't do that. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could add a few more bands to it. It just needs to be solid enough to where when you pick it up, it's not going to fold in on you. So this is what the scrunch or brain design looks like. And we're going to get right into dyeing that. I'm going to pull my tray out here. I'm going to do this in a rainbow pattern as well. Now, as you see, as I'm picking this up, you're seeing what's going to happen sometimes. It's going to fold in on you. You just have to make sure that you hold it in position until you can get it on something and smash it out a little bit more. Now, I'm going to add another band right here, just because that's where it's smashing in. So, all right. Now, when you lay the die down on this design, you are not going for any kind of planned pattern. If you do have a planned pattern, that's great. But doing any kind of random pattern on these shirts will be just as effective as if you're doing some kind of playing pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with yellow. Just out of water here. And I'm just going to make a line from one side to the other in a diagonal line like that. And like I said, this is a random. I'm, I just decided I was going to do this just now. I'm going to do a ran, uh, random color placement, but this is going to be a rainbow. Rainbow colors. Put orange right next to that. Yellow. And these are all the same colors as we did in the spiral video. Lemon yellow, deep orange, scarlet, turquoise, bright green, and blue violet. I might add a little bit of black in on this one too. So I have it up. I do. Okay. 
put the scarlet next to the orange. Okay. I'm going to go to purple. I'm going to put some purple on this side and then probably over here too as well. So I'm going to my blue violet. I'm going to use just a little bit of white there so I can add blue to there too. A little bit of purple down here. Okay. Sometimes I'll just take my syringe and just give it just a little poke because that will squeeze the dye down into it. Okay, I need some water. I don't have any over here. Okay. Now I'm going to clean out my syringe again because I'm going to be moving to blue, which is turquoise. It's going to be right above the purple. And as you see, sometimes you get something like this. You can not even know you did it and just hit a rubber band. And it will splash little dots of color onto something you don't want color on. It happens from time to time. It's tie-dye. Okay. Now, putting that green and that red spot there. I, I forgot to put the blue on the other side, so I'll have to go back and clean my syringe out and put blue on there. Sometimes I do that and I shoot and I hit myself in the head afterwards. Say what the hell did you do that for? Okay. Alright. Now to finish this off I'm going to use some black and what I'm going to do is just make dots of black and how I do that is pretty simple. I just take the black in, hover above the shirt and just let it drip. And this will put like subtle hints of black in the shirt. It won't overtake it and that's what I like about it. Now I'm going to flip it over. I don't care if the dye gets onto other things at this point in time because the scrunch and like I said, scrunches are random patterns, and if you sit around worrying about it all day long, you're just going to find out whenever you wash the shirt out that it's going to look just as cool. Okay. Now, I'm going to clean the syringe because we are going from black back to yellow. When you flip the shirt over, if you want to make a true scrunch pattern, you have to mix it up whenever you flip the shirt over. So you could do lines, diagonal lines like you did before, but you want to maybe like put them in a certain situ certain like different pattern going up this way maybe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make dots of color now. So it's going to make pat well it, it, it's it's not really dots but patches of color I should say. Stay with the yellow. Put the yellow up here. And then look, you get a little green, of course. And you mix those. And you go to the orange. Orange right here where this yellow is. And right here. Ooh. Go straight to the red. Just a little patch of red there. Red, red, red. 
And uh, let's go right here. Be nice and colorful in the middle there. All right, now we're going to go to green. I always go to green because then I can do blue and purple at the same time. I could do purple and do blue and green, but I just like to get the green out of the way first. I'll do some green here over the yellow in between the two reds. We'll do some green. We'll set this yellow over this blue. Okay. As you see, I'm trying to put complementary colors next to each other. It works sometimes, it doesn't work, but you want to try to complement your colors next to each other because you want it to look nice. And some colors are mixed and make browns, and that's not always the best. So. Uh, we're gonna go here with the blue. Try not to get it into that orange there because it'll make brown. I'm gonna do something else with that. And we'll go right here where this purple is next to the screen. Between them two greens. And now we're going to get purple. Go straight to purple because we just did turquoise. Purple here. It's going to be next to some colors that doesn't complement, but it'll be fine. Okay. As you see, we got two spaces left. I'm going to put some random colors in there. What? Uh, yellow over here. Just do yellow right here. And Robin's a blue. It's a lighter blue color. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the black that I did before. I'm just going to do dots of black randomly. All right. And there's the finished product. On that side, if there's a little die coming down, it doesn't matter. And the other side. And we're going to do like we did on the last one. We're going to put it in the bag. There you go. And I'm going to let that sit for at least 24 hours. I always, like I said, let mine sit for 48 hours, though, but at least 24. And I'll rinse it out. We'll have a rinsing video here soon. Um, and then that'll be how you generally rinse out every design we have on this page. All right. If you like this, if you like this video, please give me a like. If you would like to see more tie-dye tutorials, reveals, and other things in the future, subscribe, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>